Last week was a pretty exciting time in the land of Overwatch. We saw the addition of a brand new hero to the PTR, Bastion got a huge rework, we also saw the start of competitive season 4. But it wasn't all roses with this new season because along with this change of season, we saw a change of rules when it comes to skill rating decay, rules that appear to punish the more casual Overwatch player. And by casual, I'm not referring to people of a certain skill rating, uh, bronze, silver, and gold, and platinum, no. Those aren't casual players. We could have people in those ratings that are super serious and that play Overwatch almost every day. By casual, I mean people who aren't playing Overwatch very often, or at least on a consistent basis every single week. People who got stuff to do, or as the cool would try to say, I got a life. I don't play much Overwatch, bro. I got a life. And, and that's a, a reasonable statement, although a little bit defensive. People got stuff to do. Not everyone can sit down and play Overwatch every single day, like I'm a afforded the ability to do because, well, oddly enough, this is my job. People got school, they got work, they got families, they got relationships to take care of, they got uh, traveling to do, they got life to live. Those people seem greatly affected by this new change. So what is this change? Well, in the prior season, it was the case that if you were above skill rating of 3000, you had to play at least one game a week to maintain your rating. Otherwise, it would start to decay. However, with the new competitive season four, they have changed it to require at least seven games per week. That's right. And the idea was this change would improve the accuracy of the player's current skill rating, as well as making maintaining multiple high level accounts more difficult and and to make the upper tier placement more meaningful. Now it's important when looking at this to first try to figure out who this affects and how many people it affects. Well, fortunately enough, Overwatch principal designer Scott Mercer came out and posted a blog concerning competitive season four, where he specifically talked about all of the skill ratings of which the player base was divided up as such. Bronze accounted for 6% of all players, silver 22%, gold 34%, Platinum, 23%, Diamond, 10%, Masters, only 3%, and Grandmasters, the highest of rating, accounted for less than a percent of the total player base. So just looking at this, we can see, first of all, it doesn't have 200. I know, it's because these numbers are rounded, according to Scott. But looking at this, we notice that from Bronze to Platinum actually accounts for a total of 85% of the population, whereas Diamond to Masters, roughly 15%. And this skill rating change only only affects people diamond and above. So only about 15% of the population are affected by the skill rating decay. But then on top of that, only people in those skill ratings who aren't playing very often, or at least less than seven competitive games a week. Which admittedly, depending on what you have going on in your life and the different obligations, getting in seven competitive games can be quite difficult. But the reason they apparently are doing this is to try to make things, I guess, much more accurate of a representation representation of what your current skill is. And they're saying that if you're not playing Overwatch at least seven games a week, then it's not an accurate representation of where you should fall amongst the rest of the player base who is playing that often. Specifically of this, Scott said, as mentioned in the competitive blog, only having to play one game per week didn't make your current skill rating very accurate or meaningful. Current skill rating should reflect your skill rating as an active player. If you do decay, it only affects your current displayed skill rating. This decay does not affect the internal matchmaking rating we use, so we can still place you in fair matches. When you do come back and actively play matches, you'll also typically gain more SR from a win until your displayed skill rating and internal matchmaking rating have again reached equilibrium. So this was an interesting comment from Scott because it helped, I guess, put at bay any concerns that these super high skill players who say were like 4,000 SR and above, maybe they wouldn't play for a a few weeks or a month or whatever, and their SR would drop all the way down to 3,000. And then all of a sudden, these people who are should be at 4,000 SR are playing against people who are only 3,000 SR because of skill rating decay? No, that's not the case. Because their internal matchmaking rating stayed the same, even though their displayed current skill rating changed, they're still going to be matched against people who they would have been matched uh, based on what their last known skill was when they last actively played. So that's nice that they're at least helping deal with that. But what about the notion that this is uh, apparently punishing people who, again, 
have a life. Come on, bro. I got stuff to do. I got a girlfriend and a job. I got kids. I got all that's all fine and good. But if we're looking at a competitive environment and a competitive rating system, and if we take into account the fact that this only affects anywhere between 10 and 15% of the total population of players, truly it doesn't affect that many people. And whether you have obligations to do, that's fine. Those obviously should be more important. And if those things are more important to you, as they should be, then playing this game and maintaining a high skill rating, then so be it. The good news is that when and if you do come back to playing Overwatch on a consistent basis again, you should jump right back up because that internal matchmaking rating has stayed the same. It's only your outwardly presented current skill rating that is what decayed. And I would also argue that if people aren't playing that often if you're not able to get in seven games a week which trust me I, I i know even with what i do how difficult that can be but if you're not even playing that often should you really care about what your current skill rating is because obviously the game isn't that much of a huge priority to you so as such don't attach so much value to that number that digital number on the screen and and what that means it doesn't mean anything it doesn't change how good you are at the game and it shouldn't affect your self-worth it shouldn't affect you in the slightest it's just a number in a game. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for me here today. As always, I want to know what you guys think of the video. Let me know in the comment section below. Hope you all have a good one. And until next time, I'll see you later.